Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Sarah Ahmed, and I'm here today to talk to you about a social issue, a women's rights issue, uh, patriarchy. I think uh, understanding patriarchy is a key to understanding women suffering around the world. So, uh, so many people claim that they don't understand it. What are you talking about? What is patriarchy? Are you insulting our fathers? <laughs> Things like that. And uh, when you read feminist uh, literature and your uh, women's rights uh, movements and you read about this uh, uh, patriarchal um, structures and systems, you see a lot of definitions. But there is one that I really like and I would like to share it with you today. Uh, it's by uh, the, the sociologist, Ellen uh, Johnson. He wrote, and I quote, patriarchy does not refer to any man or collection of men, but to a kind of society in which men and women participate. It's a society. A society is patriarchal uh, to the degree that it promotes male privilege by being male dominated, male identified, and male centered. It's also organized around an obsession with control and involves as one of its key aspects, the oppression of women. So basically what he is saying is that this is a society, a description of a society. It's not referring to a man like a father or a group of men. It's a society and society by definition has both men and women. And they live in that society together under certain certain um, elements or concepts that are stressed upon and they are reinforced or enforced. The core theme for patriarchy is male domination. Males are considered superior and they dominate the society. They are the dominant uh, gender. And of course, for, for any um, sector of the community or society to be dominant, uh, there is another one that's being oppressed. It's a, if you are equal, there is no dominant, there is no oppressed. But if there is a dominant uh, sector of the community, then there is an oppressed sector that's equivalent to it on the other side. And the oppression here is uh, practiced on women. So male-centered and dominated societies uh, are considered patriarchal. Okay. Uh, in the, my journey, trying to simplify uh, patriarchy and what it means and how it hurts everybody and harms us in general, men and women, uh, I'm building a process map or a, a mind map, sorry a mind map, and I love mind maps. They organize your thinking, they put everything in the same, in one place, and you can think around topics. 
So I will share with you how far I came uh, in constructing this uh, patriarchal systems map, mind map. So let me share the, the screen with you and we'll go uh, over uh, what Okay, as you can see, and um, I actually, so far, uh, my main island or the main topic is the patriarchal systems. And this is a definition I shared with you uh, from uh, Alan Johnson, the sociologist about patriarchy. So that this is the definition of patriarchy. patriarchy. As you can see the, the in the right side of the, uh, of the tree, um, I filled some information, and these are the basic information trying to um, simplify our understanding about this system. As you know, the, the word system actually is used uh, a lot in the business world, in the manufacturing world, and uh, there they have a very concrete definition for it. Uh, they define a system as a collection of elements or um, 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 constituents that are linked together by processes, protocols, uh, um, relations. Uh, and the, 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 the goal of that system is to come up with some output. So... Uh, if we consider patriarchy as a, as, a, as a system, we are talking about structure, processes, and output. I understand this is a, an oversimplification, uh, and maybe uh, when it comes to such uh, complex systems that has been present and existing for thousands of years, basically, uh, it's difficult to put them in these uh, very concrete um, ways, but, but uh, nonetheless, it simplifies our understanding. So uh, let's look at what I mean by system structure. Generally, the system structure is the components and the elements that form the, 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 the system. Okay, uh, these can be tangible, can be intangible, but uh, the tangible things can be, um, uh, if you are talking about um, a, a business, uh, like a company, the company, uh, if you consider it as a system that's uh, formed and uh, uh, built to give me a certain output, think of any company or business, then the system structure of that company is the collection of its the the the, the building itself where the company is the furniture within it the the um, different components of the building uh the people who were there human resources or humans who actually work within that company are considered part of the structure of the system and uh, there are other things that are there, uh, uh, like the, the 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 culture in the workplace is considered part of the structure of the system. Um, so this is what I mean by structure. When it comes to processes, um, these are the the kinds of relationships that are uh, uh, constructed between these two different elements. The policies, the protocols, the rules, the laws, whatever, govern and uh, form these relationships between these different elements of the system is considered a process. And the output is whatever that company is intending to bring out to the world, right? What you are producing, your product, your output. So let's try to look at the patriarchal system along these lines. Let me um, zoom it so that we can see better. 
Okay. So uh, when it comes to, this is the definition I just uh, shared with you. Uh, let me get it out of the way. Actually, I can't. Let me get it here. Okay, so uh, let's go to the structure, system structure. I managed to divide the structures that constitute the different elements or components of the system into four categories. These categories are the people. It's all about people. This is a society. This is a societal system. So it's people. People are the most important structural element. Um, then the family structure. Actually, family structure is a very important element in the structure of this patriarchal system. When, when, when it, it's actually, it, it's, uh, it, it resides on top of this because the, this family unit is very important to maintain, to maintain the integrity, uh, you can say, about, of the patriarchal system. If there is no family, uh, a lot of hierarchy will dissolve and a lot of the power of the system will go away. Uh, the third component is males dominating institutions, males at the positions of power, uh, the males at the positions of um, policy making and decisions and uh, decision making and all these things. This is important. This is a very important structural component to the system. And the fourth part is gender roles. Uh, patriarchy has this nag about defining clearly, clearly the gender roles. And what I mean by gender, gender is the associate construct, by the way. It's not something that is absolute. It's the society and it's a patriarchal society that decided that uh, this is how a woman should look like and should behave like. And this is how a man should look like and should behave like. So it clearly divided uh, the, the genders into two distinct genders with clear and distinct behaviors, duties, and roles. And this collection of behaviors and duties of the women, they, we call them feminine, feminine uh, characteristics or feminine traits. And those of the males are considered masculine, well, sorry, not males, men, considered masculine, and they are supposed to be upheld and performed by men. So these clear and rigid genders and gender roles should be maintained for this system to work. Okay, and uh, I will talk some more in another talk uh, about genders, gender role, and what gender is, and what gender identity is, and how is that playing into this picture. Uh, but I just want to uh, prove my point that gender roles are very important structural components of this system. Without them, without having a clearly distinct uh, woman, and feminine uh, characteristics and men and masculine characteristics without this clear distinction, we will not have a, a, a solid patriarchal system. By the way, people need to, under need to understand, I'm not here to, def I'm here to dismantle this thing, to, to, to try to analyze it and simplify it for people to understand what I mean or what's meant by patriarchy. Um, now, this is about the structure. Uh, let's go to the processes. And um, uh, processes are, uh, as I said, simply how these structures and elements and components relate to each other. How is the relationship between these components 
uh, is uh, managed or how it happens. Um, to for 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 an any oppressive system to exist and continue existing, uh, you need to maintain the power difference, the authority difference, uh, or gap. You can say this gap, uh, if maintained, the dominant group, which is men in this case. The dominant group uh, will try to defend their privilege or privileges over the other oppressed group, which is women and girls in this case. So how do you do that? How do you maintain an oppressive social system and maintain this power gap? Dominant, oppressed. This, this is how we relate. So uh, you maintain it by all kinds of negative, negative relations. And these, these are just examples. What you see here are just examples of uh, what, uh, uh, how we relate to each other and how unhealthy, unhealthy uh, our relationship to each other is based on this negative uh, kind of uh, relations. Uh, so these processes uh, consist of or uh, consist of violence and intimidation that's frequently used to maintain that power gap, devaluation of women, just break her, kill the self-esteem, kill every confidence she has about herself and show her her place in the world. And what is she here for? It's a very clear, and I will talk some more about that, very clear job that you have. Otherwise, please just stay in that corner. That's the message. Humiliation, of course, discrimination. And we see it, uh, this, this discrimination part between men and women, we see it everywhere. Um, and uh, this is one of the main, main tools, actually, and main methods and processes used to maintain this power gap. Exclusion. And uh, the way I think about exclusion is, exclusion means getting you out of a certain area or a space. Throughout time and for the longest history, uh, women have been confined to a very small space. That's the home. This is the woman's space, or this is the space that you are allowed to be in. Uh, in contrast, men are allowed to occupy all the rest of the spaces, basically, that we have in this uh, uh, earth. Any other space is allowed for men. So, and, and men have their ways of trying to confine women to certain spaces and excluding them from others. And again, all these points are very rich and you can talk about them uh, for hours, but exclusion is one of the uh, very um, famous, you can say, uh, and uh, frequently used method and process to prevent women from uh, flourishing and uh, invading other spaces or being in other spaces. Um, socialization, well, what, what, what do I mean by socialization? I mean the way we raise our children. And the difference between raising girls and raising boys. And even after we are done raising them, the messages that are given or um, emitted basically from the society to men and to women throughout their lives. 
men are being told you are a leader, you are strong, you need to be fearful, you need to uh, look for or reach your uh, highest potential, you are the protector, you are the uh, provider, you are great, you are, you are, you are. In the in contrast, girls are being told you need to be polite, you need to be submissive, you can't uh, think of uh, other um, far-reaching aspirations and have dreams uh, because your ultimate place is in the house or at home, sorry, uh, uh, domesticated, being a wife and a mother, and this is your job. Any other dreams that you have needs to be uh, killed in their infancy because that's not what you are supposed to do. So, this socialization issue or the difference between how we socialize or we raise uh, men and women uh, is um, a very big element or how uh, one of the most important ways of relating, which is, um, I think uh, it's an, uh, a perpetual crime against women. Anyway, uh, so the, the third part or the third element of the system is the output. So we did all that and we are doing all that. What is the outcome? <laughs> what, uh, how are we, um, is it, are we getting any benefit as societies, not men? Men are getting benefits, uh, a lot of benefits. But as a society, are we benefiting? from a system like this? Let, let me give you three of the major outputs. There are so many, but let me give you three. Gender inequality. I don't, I don't think anybody doesn't understand that this exists throughout the world. At varying degrees, yes, but throughout the world, we have gender inequality, inequality in all aspects of life, all aspects, social, political, economic, financial, uh, career, whatever aspect you think about, gender inequality exists. So this is a known product or output of this system. The other one is oppression of women. And Oppression. Some some people might think this is this is a strong word. What are you talking about? Women are now all over the place, and they are they do what they like. No, they don't. Women are still oppressed, and I, as I said, oppression uh, is when two groups of people. And the identification or the classification of these two groups was based on anything, skin color, gender, age, ethnicity, whatever. We have two groups classified as different. And one group is dominant. The other group, by definition, is oppressed. Here, the dominant group is men, the oppressed group is women. So there is oppression of women. Again, it varies in severity and degree based on where you are in the world, uh, what the traditions are, what the region are, is uh, what the religion and the, uh, the other practices are. Uh, but it's there, it's present. So that there is no denying that. And the third output that we continue to reinforce male dominance. And as I said, uh, males being dominant is a key uh, uh, factor in the existence and the continuation of this system. That's the, the whole mark of it. Males should be dominant. Okay, 
So this is how I'm thinking around patriarchy. And now I want to share some details about the system structure. And I will start with people. And uh, in other uh, videos, we'll continue going through these um, three branches uh, to at least try to clarify what, what uh, our societies are doing and what is happening around us. Okay, so uh, the people component of the structure of uh, the patriarchal system, of course, people uh, based on patriarchy are two kinds. Women and girls and men and boys. I group them like that. Um, and this is, as I said, based on the gender, which is a social construct, social construct. There is the uh, corresponding term that's sex. Sex is a biological construct. It's a biological description based on certain physiological findings, certain uh, uh, morphological features, uh, and other things, you can define this person as male or female. <coughs> okay. Um, the sex and gender are not always aligned. Most of the time they are, meaning when I have a female and subsequently I call her a girl or a woman, usually that's the more common case. But sometimes I have a biological female that has a different gender identity. And um, as I said, if we stopped at the term gender without calling it gender identity, we are ignoring the psychological part of it. Psychologically, some people might feel different. You as society told them you are a boy or you are a girl, but that's not how they feel they are. And this is um, uh, what's called se uh, uh, sexual orient, not, no, no, sorry, gender identity. And this gender identity has a psychological component to it. It's not just a social uh, construct. So the gender identity and the sex or the gender you assign to that person can be in conflict. And this is how, how we get trans people. Trans person is the one that's biologically um, male, but identifies and feels that psychologically he is a woman. So this is a trans woman, okay? Okay, th this is a bigger subject and we'll talk about it some other time. For now, uh, let's deal with this binary division or this binary uh, distinction between women and uh, men, okay? In the patriarchal society, what, how do you, um, or what does this uh, system, uh, what the patriarchy wants from women? What are we asking women to be in a patriarchal society? Okay. Three main things. Stay under the control of men, should be under. And limit the woman's potential. And this, what I mean by this is we don't have a lot of dreams and aspirations. Eventually, your place is at home, doing domestic work, being a mother, and raising the children. Stay at home and perform domestic work. So these are the things that women are supposed to do within a patriarchal society. Uh, 
Okay. Um, then we go to something called the core themes used to raise girls in a patriarchal system. So if that's what we want from them, uh, the, uh, domestica the domestication and uh, doing the domestic work and being a mother, being a wife, uh, limiting their potential, don't think beyond uh, the limits of motherhood and uh, wifehood, uh, stay under control and be uh, submissive and uh, obedient and good girl, basically. So that's what we want them to be. So how are we doing that? We are doing that or achieving these goals, terrible goals, by the way, by raising, raising these girls based on certain core themes. And when I say a core theme, meaning the way this theme is shown in one society might be different from the other. But the message, the idea is the same. For example, emphasis on appearance and passivity. Appearance. Women are valued based on their physical appearance. There is a stress. There is there are, all the society stressing on this part. Usually, when you are describing your friend, you don't, your male friend, if you're a male and you're talking about a male friend, appearance is not an issue at all. Never. It doesn't even come to your mind to describe him as handsome or beautiful or whatever. You describe his other qualities. He is funny. He is friendly. He is intelligent. He is uh, hardworking, stuff like that. The things that uh, people are sh should uh, look at more than uh, physical appearance. That, that, that's the thing that you have the least control over, how I look. So, and it's very shallow and superficial and um, it's really um, uh, a shame. It's really a shame that we just judge women based on that this woman can be uh, a terrible person basically can be uh, uh, envy can, she can be uh, uh, very shallow ignorant ign illiterate ignorant uh, uh, can be so many things empty from the inside empty of good values and good uh, uh, traits but because she's beautiful, she will get the attention of everybody. And she will feel that she's on top of the world and she's the best and she's because she's beautiful. It's, it's, and this, this understanding or this focus on the appearance created so many harmful behaviors and harmful uh, phenomena in the society that uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And of course, when you idolize uh, one, one uh, trait or characteristic or feature in a person, it will be the focus of their life. That's how I get my value, through my appearance. And that impacts, of course, the, 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 the way girls think about themselves and boys thinking about women or girls. Uh, both are impacted by this notion. Um, okay, uh, regarding the passivity part, uh, being passive generally means you are just receiving. You are a recipient of uh, actions from others. Receive, uh, uh, you are a receiver rather than uh, somebody who has initiative and will go forward and uh, um, take action and change things. So passivity is really um, loved and encouraged in women. Don't be uh, 
uh, a fighter. Don't try to uh, antagonize others. Don't uh, try to assert yourself. All these things are not really uh, encouraged. And whenever somebody, so a woman, is assertive and able to uh, take action and organize her life and do something for others and this kind, she will be uh, kind of ostracized or um, um, you can say um, condemned for it. This is not a feminine feature. This is a masculine feature. Men are supposed to do that, not women. Before I move on to the next part, I want people to understand that uh, these things exist in varying degrees. So they are not absolute. Okay? And uh, in some cultures, being assertive and uh, taking action and very uh, forthcoming and doing all these things is encouraged. But in some cultures, it's really discouraged. So uh, it's a spectrum. Any phenomena lives in a spectrum. But that's what is encouraged by patriarchal systems. Okay, let's move to this point, which is saying, uh, again, I'm talking about the themes, the core themes uh, used to raise girls in a patriarchal system. Domesticity as the ultimate goal, that's the theme. Try to sway the thinking of women and girls, men and boys, and the whole society uh, towards the fact that women are supposed to be at home. Okay, so marriage and motherhood are the pinnacle of their existence. That's what you tell them. And by the way, it's really, uh, I feel sad that we achieved all these technological advances and we did all that. And now we are at the age of uh, artificial intelligence and so many great things are happening in terms of invention and technology. And we still have these mentalities and these uh, concepts like Marriage and motherhood should be the pinnacle of uh, the existence of women. It's sad. I'm sorry, but it's really sad. Okay. The, the, the other part of having uh, goals and aspirations. Aspirations for career or independence are discouraged. Yeah, you don't you don't think like that as a woman. I want to be independent. I want to take care of myself. This is my life. This kind of talk is totally discouraged. Women are supposed to be under the control, guidance, and uh, uh, domination of males, men. That's why in most societies, what you see is girls go from their father's house to their husband's house uh, without any period where they are independently living or uh, doing their own thing without being supervised. That in most, in a lot of communities or societies, that's not uh, the way the woman's life goes. So throughout their life, even after, uh, if something happened to that marriage, the, she got divorced, the husband died, somehow there is no husband anymore, she will go back to the family house and the care of her brother or uh, father again or whatever. And sometimes in some societies, even the eldest son so it's really, uh, when you look at it, it's really a life of imprisonment, basically. I can't make decisions. I can't be my myself. I have to be under this supervision and control all the time. 
think about it. It's 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 that way, and that's what happen. What's happening around us every day, and that's the expectation of the system. The system expects that to happen. Moving on, um, submissiveness and difference. As I said, if you have dominance, this means there is submission at the other end. Okay? And if you have a dominant group, there is a submissive group, or should be. What is That's what is required by this, these patriarchal systems. So how does it look like? Encouraging or having this theme of submissiveness and difference. Um, you need to be polite. The, the, the ideal woman or girl needs to be polite, speaks in a low tone of voice. So yelling like me in, during this video is not acceptable to many people. Uh, agreeable. Of course, no autonomy. You can't decide for yourself. That's that in some communities or societies, it's really difficult for a woman or a girl to decide anything for herself. Nothing is allowed. So zero autonomy or almost zero autonomy. No assertiveness. I just want you to imagine somebody who was raised throughout their lives not being able to decide anything for themselves, they will not develop that uh, uh, competency or that uh, um, uh, learn that ability. They would not. You didn't give her a chance to be assertive. You didn't teach her to be assertive. You didn't encourage assertiveness. And when a girl has no confidence, she cannot be assertive, she cannot, she has no self-esteem, then it's difficult for her to set boundaries, which now we are discovering is the most important element or the most important component of having a mental well-being and ability to deal with the world. Set boundaries. The ability to set boundaries is crucial. Crucial. Uh, and there is another uh, part about this, which is usually girls and uh, women prioritize the needs of others over themselves. And that's an expectation, by the way. It's not just uh, you do it out of your good heart or goodwill. No, the society is expecting you to prioritize others, which are usually men, over yourself. <clears throat> And um, I think by now, people are kind of seeing a theme here. We have the theme of women has very limited value as mothers and, um, um, and wives, and uh, they are good for domestic labor, but otherwise they need to really uh, stay calm, polite, uh, listen to what they are told, uh, they have no capacity to decide for themselves or set boundaries or ask for anything for themselves and they need to prioritize others over themselves. Uh, this means they are really not considered uh, on the same level as men. They are not. I, I, I'm not sure they are considered human beings in the my, uh, minds of uh, some uh, people. I think they are considered less than humans. Maybe uh, something equivalent to a farm animal or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But that's what's happening here. Uh, the last point that I want to talk about in this video, and as I said, I will continue talking about these points in more details as we go, and I will continue building this tree. Um, uh, the, this is a theme of internalized shame. Shame is a horrible emotion. Horrible. And living in shame 
uh, put you in, in an area equivalent to having chronic trauma. Um, so shame can traumatize and shame can be a result of trauma. And I think all girls are women and women have been exposed to trauma just by way of raising them within patriarchal systems. Uh, and some had it worse than others. But internalized shame that's created in a patriarchal systems is around um, and by the way, a culture of shame is promoted because this is a tool to subdue and control women. And the way they do it is uh, create this culture of shame around women's sexuality, uh, women's bodies, and their desires. And desire, it doesn't have to be a sexual desire. Any desire that you have, it's shameful. You need to look at your brother or you need to consider your father and you need to respect your husband something usually there is something before your own desires and you need to feel shame for prioritizing yourself at some point or any, at any time so this culture of shame is promoted and what are the results when you Tell a girl, little girl, that her body is uh, a source of shame. And uh, if she talked in a different way than what is said for her, she needs to be sh to feel ashamed. And she can't talk about sex or even think about sex. If she did, she needs to be ashamed. So what do you expect will happen to these girls and this woman? They will have low self-esteem, no surprise there, and they will continue to have self-doubt. Is this right? Is this wrong? Am I doing something wrong? And this self-doubt thing is very prevalent among women, by the way. Even if things are clearly wrong, and the wrong is done to them, they can't see it clearly. Why? Because of this kind of messaging. They can't see it. And the third, the third and uh, very uh, actually sad thing is they have difficulty even advocating for themselves. Like now I'm talking about um, issues related to women's rights, feminism and these things. And I'm sure some women will think, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, what am I doing? What is this? What are you uh, advocating for? We are fine. No, you are not fine. No, you are not fine. Just because somebody is not hitting you or violent against you or injured you physically, that doesn't mean you are fine. Fine means I can reach or live the life I love or would like to live. That's fine. Just like the chances that are uh, men getting every time or every day in their lives. They have the chance to live their lives to the fullest. If they are healthy mentally and physically and they uh, can, uh, they are motivated and uh, disciplined, they can reach their potential. You are not guaranteed the same chance. So you are not fine. And, need, and people need to continue talking about these things because somebody has to. Uh -huh. um, thank you. I think I took too long, but um, I get... Uh, <laughs> um, Okay, um, I get excited, I guess, about these issues. Um, as I said, I will continue talking about these issues and I would like uh, people to um, join uh, the channel and subscribe to my channel so that I can uh, continue uh, providing uh, and sharing these thoughts with you. Thank you very much.